This week I've had no shortage of Raspberry Pi products to review. It's been a very fun week. And today I have this right here to review and, well, what is this? This is actually a touchscreen case for the Raspberry Pi that gives you access to a display with touchscreen capabilities and you can actually insert a Raspberry Pi right into this case. But interestingly enough, this case actually doubles as an external display as well, so this is going to be fairly interesting to review. It's made by a company named Evasiv. I don't know if I'm actually pronouncing that right, but either way, that's the company that made it, and they sent it over to me for review. And I have a policy that if someone sends me a Raspberry Pi or Linux-related product to review, well, I review it. Now, even though they did send this over to me for review, as always, all of my opinions in this video are my own, and I never allow a third party or vendor to screen any footage before I show it to you guys, so I'm going to give you guys my honest opinion of this device. What I'll do is I'll show you guys an unboxing, and then I'll show you the assembly process for installing a Raspberry Pi, and I'll give you my overall thoughts as well. So let's get started. The box labels this product the RPI All-in-One, and it's definitely that. As I mentioned earlier, you can install a Raspberry Pi inside, or you could use it as an external display. And this particular unit is quite interesting. At its core, it's a touchscreen case for the Raspberry Pi, so it can house the Raspberry Pi in addition to providing a display. And this unit does feature built-in speakers, so that way you can listen to audio out while you see what's on the screen. You can install your Raspberry Pi directly inside and use it as an all-in-one unit, just like the name would imply, or you can ignore the Raspberry Pi compatibility altogether and use it as an external display for any device that features HDMI out. So its usefulness depends on what you want to use it for, more on that later. First, let's look at the display. There's three variations available, each with a different resolution. The resolutions that are being offered are 1280x800, 1366 by 768 and 1080p. The pricing starts at $169.99 for the first two resolutions that I mentioned, or you could get the 1080p version for $179.99. And since the Full HD version is only $10 more than the lower resolution versions, then it probably doesn't make any sense to go with anything else. The unit that I was sent mentions on the box that it's Full HD, but when I connected the device to it while I was using it as an external display, the resolution that's selected by default is 1280 by 800 However, I went into the settings and manually increased the resolution to 1080p, and it didn't seem to be an issue, so I'm not sure why the 1080p version wouldn't be auto-detected as 1080p, but it is what it is, and it's easy to change the setting. The screen quality itself is, honestly, average. It's not extremely bright, but it's not too dim either. The brightness was already set to 100% when I first turned it on, but there are various buttons on the back that you can use to adjust various settings, including the brightness. As far as the chassis and overall design, I find it to be, well, decent. The chassis itself is primarily plastic, and it's not going to win any design awards or anything like that, and it may not be the coolest looking device that you might have on your desk, but it looks decent enough and it gets the job done. On the back of the unit is a kickstand that you can use to adjust the viewing angle, and as far as ports, it has audio, HDMI, USB Type-C, and a barrel connector for the included power supply. The first thing I did was use it as an external display. Here I have it connected to the DeskPi Pro, which is something that I reviewed earlier this week in another video. And it worked just fine. When you use this as an external display, then it works pretty much like an external display. And even though the primary audience for this device are those of you that are into the Raspberry Pi, it really doesn't matter if a Raspberry Pi is what you connect. You could connect a game system, a Blu-ray player, basically anything that has HDMI out. You can even use this as an external display for a notebook if you wanted to, so that way you could throw this in your bag and have an external display when you're on the go. Now the thing is, if your primary consideration for this device is to use it as an external display, I'm not really sure I could recommend it for just that purpose. The thing is, retailers like Amazon, they have no shortage 
of portable displays available, and many of them are not only cheaper, but they also have a higher resolution and higher screen size as well. So if that's your only use case, then I'm not really sure it's best served by this particular device. But I think where the RPI All-in-One really shines is the fact that you can also use it as a dedicated display for your Raspberry Pi. When I looked for competing Raspberry Pi touchscreens on Amazon, for example, I wasn't able to find any that had a full HD resolution. So I guess in this case, this particular device has an edge on most, if not all, of the competing products that aim to offer a Raspberry Pi touchscreen case. So let's switch gears and talk about the assembly process if you want to go ahead and install a Raspberry Pi inside this unit. To install a Raspberry Pi, you first remove all of the screws on the back of the unit, keeping in mind that one of the screws is underneath the kickstand, and then the cover should come right off. Inside the box, there's two brackets included, one for the Raspberry Pi 3 and the other for the Raspberry Pi 4. So depending on which one of the Raspberry Pis you have, you just simply slide the appropriate bracket into place. And then on the Pi itself, there's two dongles that you plug into your Pi, one for USB-C and the other for HDMI. And there's other dongles included as well, if you have a Raspberry Pi 3, for example. So basically, you just choose the two appropriate dongles for your particular Raspberry Pi and insert those. And then once the dongles are inserted, the Raspberry Pi unit will fit nice and snug inside the case. To utilize touchscreen capability, there's a USB cable that comes with the unit, which you'll connect to the board itself and then the other end to a USB port on the Raspberry Pi. Now, I find it interesting that in this configuration, the touchscreen cable literally sticks out of the back of the unit. More on that later. Once everything is connected, when you next power on the display, it'll be converted to essentially an all-in-one desktop computer. So, if you're looking for a touchscreen case for your Raspberry Pi, then the RPI All-in-One definitely fits the bill. Now, the fact that you can use this as an external display, as well as an all-in-one Raspberry Pi desktop case, that makes reviewing it a little interesting, because whether or not I can recommend this to you guys actually just depends on what your use case is. Again, if you just want to use this as an external display and that's it, it's probably not a good fit. But if you want an external display in addition to a Raspberry Pi case, then it's definitely a very interesting thing that both use cases are served by this unit. I think it's really awesome that this particular device is so flexible for multiple different use cases. Now, this particular device has a few quirks that I need to make you guys aware of. First of all, the audio quality. Now, the audio quality isn't really a problem. It's fine. It's just not amazing. The audio volume is relatively low, there's no bass, so it's not the best when it comes to speakers, but it does get the job done, so depending on how much that matters to you, that could be a pro or a con. Now, speaking of audio, or at least audible in this case, the fan is very, very loud, to the point where it's completely distracting. There's just no way that you won't hear it. Now, the thing is, you can actually turn off the fan in the menu, and I suppose that's fine if you're just going to use this as an external display, but I'm not really a big fan of having no fan on the Raspberry Pi, so I'm not really sure why the fan is so loud. And as far as I know, there's no driver or fan curves to adjust here, so the fan is either on or it's off. So that's a little unfortunate. If you're in an environment where you actually don't want to hear the fan, like me, I'm in a recording studio, then the fan might actually be a little bit annoying. And that means that if you're in, I don't know, a coffee shop or something like that, using it as an external display and you have the fan enabled, that I think other people are probably going to notice. Now, another quirk about this unit is that inserting and removing the SD card of your Raspberry Pi is a bit of a chore. In fact, you have to disassemble it and remove the Raspberry Pi to actually get to the SD card slot. So I would have preferred to have access to the SD card slot outside of the case maybe with an extender or something like that, but that's not the case here. So if you want to insert and remove SD cards a lot, well, that's not going to work out very well because you will be taking things apart. Another quirk I've noticed is that the unit doesn't have any rubber feet on the bottom, so it slides around on my desk with barely any effort at all. If it had some sort of grip or rubber feet on the bottom, then it would be able to stay in place better, but unfortunately, it's just so easy to slide this around and since the power cord is a bit on the shorter side, then that means it's going to be a bit more challenging to keep it on your desk. 
Finally, I find it a little off-putting that the touchscreen cable hangs out on the back of the unit. Now, of course, you can't really see it from the front. So if somebody's looking at the display from the front, they won't notice the cable hanging out in the back. But it just looks kind of amateur-like to see the cable sticking right out of the back of the unit. Now, obviously, this doesn't really cause any functional problems. It just makes this unit look a little cheap, in my opinion. So what are my overall thoughts of the RPI all-in-one? Well, like I mentioned earlier, if you're planning on using it for just the external or portable display functionality, it's probably not a good fit for that. Now, when it comes to using this as a touchscreen display for your Raspberry Pi, I think that's a really good use case. When I was going through Amazon, I couldn't really find anything that could compare to this for the price, especially with a full HD resolution. So I think it's really cool to have something like this to use for whatever your project is that might require a display. I think I might actually use this one for a home assistant display. I think that'd be pretty cool. So for that use case, I actually do recommend it. But of course, there are some quirks, like I mentioned earlier. So if you weigh the pros and the cons, I think you'll be able to make a decision as far as whether or not you want to consider this for your use case. But all things considered, whether or not this is actually a good purchase for you depends on what your use case is and what's important to you personally. So I can't really make a universal recommendation here. I just figure you could take the information that I've provided you and you can decide whether or not this is a good fit for you in particular. Either way, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. And I have some awesome videos coming, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching.